Good afternoon, on what is a cool, grey and overcast day. It is Monday the 29th of August, August bank holiday. I've got a nice hot cup of tea. And a pile of boxes to unbox. So, I've got this quite a slim one here. So let's open it up. go and inside if I, can, oh, there we go. I have a copy of Kern um, an adventure game inspired by the likes of Into the Odd and the, and Nave explore a mysterious woodland filled with all manner of creatures fey and fell pillage ancient barrows still powerful spell books and slay horrid beasts um, so this is a minimum, uh, or a minimal, uh, old school Renaissance style role playing game, um, and essentially it's designed for one player, uh, sorry, for one facilitator, the warden, and at least one other player, uh, in which the player characters are hardened adventurers, uh, exploring a dark and mysterious wood filled with strange folk, hidden treasure, and unspeakable monstrosities. Um, at, uh, and so it was designed with the following philosophies and it just clearly states them there so classless um, and, uh, um, characters are powerful but they are vulnerable so death is a possibility um, fiction first um, so essentially storytelling telling a good story is more important story than the mechanics um, characters are changed through in-world advancement so they grow uh, the warden's role is to portray the rules, situations, and PCs. He is he is a neutral arbiter. Player choice principles. Um, warden and players have guidelines that help foster specific play experience defined by critical thinking, exploration, and an emergent narrative. Shared objectives. Uh, players should trust one another to engage with the uh, the shared setting, character goals, and party challenges. Uh, so the parties typically work together towards a common goal as a team. Um, so we. These are all laid out further. We've got, we've got um, principles for the warden. Um, so we're handling information, setting difficulty, danger, ch giving choice, preparing, narrative focus, handling out treasures and the dire fate. Whereas for the players, it's their own agency, teamwork, uh, exploration, talking, using caution, but planning as well, and also being ambitious. So that's clearly laid out for both the warden and her players. And then character creation, name, background, traits. We have uh, three stat abilities, strength, dexterity, and willpower. Um, and um, essentially quite low stats. Everyone has an inventory, um, which has got slots in it and you store things in there. Um, at, uh, and then We've got tables for name and background, so you might be uh, Beatrice, um, at, uh, um, Cromwell, Cromwaller, or uh, um, Emery's, Emery's milk, milk, Milk's Milk, uh, backgrounds from alchemist, burglar, herbalist, miner, ranger, and so on. You're just rolling a 20-sided dice, and then we have traits according to your physique, skin, hair, face, speech. Clothing, virtue, vice, reputation, and misfortunes, and tables for your stuff and gear. So you're all it's primarily it's all random character creation, um, and you're building um, up with a character. You essentially roll up and create and interpret. Um, you know, making making them of uh, of him and her, of him or her, what you will. Um, and we have a spell book, a list of spell books, equipment lists. Uh, gear and tools, everything you need to exploring the um, dark uh, forest. Um, and if you are doing things like, um, you know, traditional kind of fantasy, um, where you might be an elf or a magic user or a ranger or a cleric, we have optional packages as well there, but not not that's not classless. Um, but, uh, Quick explanation of the rules. Again, they're fairly simple. But it's good considering they're going to be using into the odd or nave, um, and it, it pretty much the same kind of 
school of uh, light mechanics that's also seen in Mouse Ritter. Um, so you, what you're doing is you are uh, at, you're rolling low, so you're attempting to roll under the ability to save. Um, at, uh, um, armor subtracts ink damage. Uh, spell books contain single spells and take up a slot. Um, and you can have relics that will imbue with magical spells or powers. Um, and they also basically generally have a, a limited use. And we've got combat. Now combat in here I'm imagining um, essentially um, is essentially you always, I think it's basically you always hit and you roll damage. It's just as simple as that. Going to be quite brutal. Um, there's no roll to hit damage. It's okay. At some point you're going to be successful in, and, and, and hit. It's whoever survives first. Um, at, uh, and then um, essentially damage reduces, you've got hit points, which is basically more stamina rather than direct hit points because then you start taking damage from your strength. Um, at that point, you know, they also, you start suffering scars as well because it's critical damage. Um, so you've got a scars table for that effect. So that might well be, um, you might have a, la a, la a lasting scar on your necks, hands, eye, chest or ear or so on. Um, you receive a, a rattling blow, you're disorientated and shake. Describe how you refocus, uh, reorientating head, head blow, um, so on. And they've got a short bestry of things like root goblins, hooded men, wood troll, for, frost elf. Quite short, but again, if you're accent, if, you know, if you're getting a hold of a copy of Ken, it's likely you'll have access to a lot of other role-playing game books, which many of them retro clones of which you will have a bestiary, and you'll be able to extract title, you know, monsters in that, and adapt it to the kind of stats we have here. But we do have rules for creating monsters as well, and then one d hundred spells, or one hundred spells, um, before we get onto a kern. Um, to, um, uh, sorry, Kern character sheet, um, nice and simple, um, but, uh, essentially your stats and your gear, um, your rule summary, and that's it really. What it doesn't do, it gives much work in the way of uh, setting material Necessarily, it doesn't really have a um, um, an adventure in there, which I, I think it would have been would have been nice. Um, but it's simple, straightforward. If you've played anything like Nave or Master Ritter, you'll pick this up um, for, uh, very easily. If you've played anything uh, a retro clone, then again, um, it's you'll, you'll you'll pick it up just as just just as quickly. Um, so that's Kern. Uh, which is available from um, a number of sources and it's very inexpensive um, it's probably uh, to be fair uh, you can pick this up so cheaply on print or demand it's more expensive buying the dice anyway uh, I hope you have enjoyed this unboxing in the nook if you have uh, then uh, please do click on the like button down below um, at, um, if you've got any, uh, any comments or feedback, I appreciate you taking the time to post those. And then uh, lastly, if you want to be alerted to yet more unboxes in the book, look where you will see me out here uh, with um, a, a parcel from which, I, uh, from which I will extract a book or a game and talk about to the best extent of my knowledge for roughly 10 minutes or so. All of course accompanied by a nice hot cup of tea. then please do hit that subscribe button down below. In the meantime, thanks again for watching another unbo Unboxing in the Nook. I'll be back again soon with another one. Bye for now.